Hey everybody, my name is Master Rolfus, and welcome to the top 10 RTS games and strategy games of 2017. So, 2017 wasn't that big of a year, and so because of that, this list is a little bit small. In addition to that, I've also kind of neglected to add in any games that were in early access. So if you wanted to see They Are Billions, or for example, Empires of the Undergrowth, that won't be on this list. Uh, in addition to that, these are only games that I have played, so it may be a small chunk of games that we're going to be taking a look at, but again, if you disagree with this list, then please let me know down in the comments below, and if you do enjoy this video and these type of videos, then make sure you hit the like button. Anyway, let's kick it off right about now. <laughs> Alright, at the number 10 slot would be Pit People, a turn-based strategy game that I really enjoyed a lot, especially the humor. The humor and the art style in Pit People is reminiscent of that of Castle Crashers. If you enjoy Castle Crashers humor, you'll love the art, you'll love the graphics, you'll love the, uh, the humor all throughout. On top of this, I also love the customization aspect of it. But besides that, I didn't really like the turn-based combat all that much. I didn't really like how everything was automated, and it was a little bit dumbed down for me. It, uh, it wasn't really that fun, and sometimes I purposely avoided mobs in or and, you know, didn't really fight as many um, opponents as I could have, which, um, I'm not sure. I, I feel like turn-based strategy games should be very fun in their combat, like, for example, Darkest Dungeon, which is very tense and nail-biting, but this one was, uh, it, it didn't really have, like, a lot that catered to me, per se, especially with a lot of it being automated, for example. So... While I was, like, enamored by the game, both on its humor and art style, I really didn't enjoy playing it in motion. But besides that, though, I think it's a very fine turn-based strategy game and one that a lot of people will have a lot of fun of. And especially with a lot of turn-based strategy games being very serious, having something like Pit People as a comedic sort of jerk-off is pretty good. <laughs> At the number 9 slot, we got ourselves Dawn of War 3. Now, this game is a MOBA, so we're gonna go ahead and skip it. Oh, that was a long one. Alright, so the next entry will be Spellforce 3 at the number 8 slot. So, essentially, this is a fantasy RTS game, which has made a lot of, um, kind of interesting changes to the formula. So, instead of the map being just an open field where you can build structures at, they're actually divided up into different regions, and you have to capture the control post of that region. Then you're able to construct buildings in that territory. That would also involve, you know, killing the neutral mods and mobs that defend that land as well. So that's really interesting, and the fact that the resources are automated, so all you have to do is construct the building, manage uh, workers that are assigned to it, and then afterwards the resources kind of just like automatically harvest to different areas, and then also they can be traded to different regions that require that resource. It's really, really cool actually, I love the eco-management of the game. Um, all three of the factions sort of play the same way, they just have different nuances, and their starting armies are eerily similar. They may have like one or two units that are sort of different, and that's really about it. The factions only act differently towards the end when they get their late game units and their super weapons and all that stuff. So, I'm not really a big fan of the faction diversity of Spellforce 3, but the graphics, the sound, the the overall eco management of the game is really nice and you can get to some massive armies in Spellforce 3 as well so i'm quite surprised i'd love to see more maps and definitely some more factions and some more faction diversity from the first uh three factions as i felt like it was kind of a little bit weak sauce um the campaign i've played a little bit of it i was quite bored it's a little bit generic but then again i'm not really a big fan of these fantasy rts campaigns so um, I would, exp uh, if you want your opi uh, my opinion on the campaign, I'm not really sure if I'm the best one to go about looking for it. But in terms of gameplay, I think the game is quite fine. I just think that there should be a little bit more um, differences to spice up things, especially with the three different factions. It just feels like they're um, recolored and recoded. In addition, however, to commanding armies, you can also command heroes, but these also have... Um, these are also units that you can only get three of, for example, in a total game. So, it's not likely something that you're going to be spamming out over and over again, like in, for example, Dawn of War 3. So, it's more like Warcraft 3 in how you can go about using heroes. But essentially, um, that's all I really have to say about Spellforce 3. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to admit, I did put a lot of uh, time into multiplayer and uh, skirmish, and I found it awesome. I didn't really have any problems whatsoever, but I was really iffy about the late... Now, just kind of like the campaign was a little bit iffy, and then on top of this, I was not really a 
huge fan of the camp uh, gameplay moving forward considering that I would be playing three different factions but they would all be kind of the same thing so over long periods of time I was just kind of getting bored <laughs> All right, so at the number seven slot, we got ourselves Endless Space 2. This is a turn-based strategy game that has you kind of just managing different systems and planets and arm and fleets and armies into um, your massive empire. It it's really fun, actually, especially the different factions that you could play around with, one of them being a faction that can control time and space, the other one being a faction that can spread roots throughout space. There's even ones that are crazy, like, for example, the Cravers. They're just all about military and war warfare and eating it's great stuff they can't even make peace wonderful so in endless space 2 you have a wide variety of factions that are extremely different from each other this makes it so that gameplay is very very enjoyable in the game um and also extremely replayable i think that's also a great thing about strategy games they need to be very replayable if they're not replayable what's really the point you know what i'm saying like you don't want to play the same thing over and over again and get bored you want to get some new stuff that's why it's important that these different factions are unique um but it plays very much like Endless Legend, Endless Space before that. There's a lot of improvements being put onto the AI, the UI, all that stuff. How technology is researched, it's in a web instead. Um, how political factions are treated, that's also like really interesting how they were able to uh, make them more unique and have the election offices and how your citizens react to changes that the player makes a little bit more um, interesting than the typical 4x strategy game formula. If I had to pick anything that I really didn't like about it, I didn't like the combat. It was, again, automated with the exception of cards that you can use in battle. Didn't really like that. It was a little bit dumb. Um, in addition to that, I think when I was playing the game, it had a lot of lag issues. I'm sure they're fixed by now, so uh, this issue is completely moot. But that's essentially why I didn't really play the game for a long period of time, was because there was a lot of lag issues, for example. But I think if you want a damn good 4x strategy space game, it should be Endless Space 2. The factions are interesting and nuanced, the technology is really cool since it's in a web, for example, so it's not like the standard formula. Diplomacy is really nice, the AI is competent and intelligent. And also, it's with a bunch of devs who really put a lot of hard work into their game, especially since they make unique factions that the community can vote for. which. I gotta admit, um, that gets a lot of points in my book, so yeah, I, I gotta say, if you like 4x strategy space games, you should go with this one. Stellaris kinda sucks. <laughs> Alright, next on our list would be Dungeons 3. Now, this was a game that I didn't really expect to like a lot, but I actually ended up quite enjoying it. So, a lot of it comes down to the fact that Dungeons 3, it plays very much like Dungeon Master and the previous dungeon games before that, in that you are an evil guy managing a dungeon. And if that doesn't get your dick hard, I, I don't know what will. It's really, really cool premise, honestly, especially since considering that uh, Dungeons 3 also has you uh, developing your own economy and your own fucking like infrastructure defensive systems and also army with all the resources that an evil guy would get so for example he can make a crypt and create undead soldiers he can hire orcs and defend his lair he can hire demons and defend his lair he can also keep captives as prisoners and use them as more soldiers it's really cool you can even like upgrade and manage your own units and make them even better and stronger it's really awesome stuff um, I think one thing that also really caught my eye was the fact that you can even like go out into the wilderness and attack the enemy on their own soil. That was really cool in like RTS gameplay. So it would be like a dungeon master, like um, dungeon manager, but then afterwards it switched over to an RTS game. So I really did like that. Um, really, if I had any issues with the game, it'd probably be that later down the line there wasn't really a lot of like different options. To go for i wish there was like a little bit more in the way of like uh diversity and content but you know what since the game can be played in co-op campaign and the campaign itself is actually kind of funny it's like this cheeky little like nod and um a lot of, well it's like a cheeky little nod to a lot of the old dungeon keeper games and in addition to that it makes fun of like fantasy every single chance it can really get so if you like just kind of like riling on fantasy then you'll enjoy this game a whole lot more and really now when it comes to dungeon managers if you're not really satisfied with any of the new ones coming out and you want a new one and you can't really like play any of the old ones you should really go for this one i mean really now 
Yeah, um, there's really not much you can go for, go wrong here. It's your standard Dungeon Master game. Um, maybe with a little bit less cost. <laughs> All right, number five, we got ourselves Halo Wars 2. So Halo Wars 2, I loved for quite a while. And I, I got to admit, I would put it higher on this list, but there are a little bit, there are small things that are actually quite massive in actuality that just kind of like bring down the game to a crawl, but it has nothing to do with how the game is made. So for example, um, well, it does actually have everything to do with how the game is made, but it has nothing to do with any like gameplay mechanics that weren't fleshed out or anything like that. It's um, uh, something uncontrollable, sort of, but essentially put, Halo Wars 2 is an RTS game that's set in the Halo universe, so for example, if you love your Warthogs and your Spartans, you've really got yourself a good thing going here in Halo Wars 2. And Halo Wars 2 is now made by, obviously, Creative Assembly, now the Robot Entertainment, or whoever those guys were, um, Ensemble Studios, they've been completely defunct, so now they're taking up the torch, and I gotta admit, um, Halo Wars 2 is really more of what you want from Halo Wars 1, but a lot better. So for example, there's a lot more faction diversity, there's a multitude of different leaders, and a lot of these are paid for leaders, but um, using the season pass, I think you can get pretty much all of them for like uh, $60, and I think there's like 8 or 9 leaders, I'm not really sure how many of them. But essentially, there's a large cast of factions and leaders to choose from. You got yourself Serena with her ice weapons. You got yourself Anders with Sentinels. You got yourself the Arbiter with his like elite high tier units. You, you got a bunch of shit. You even got like a, a grunt leader that has grunt mechs. Who doesn't like grunt mechs? And there's actually two different leaders that have mechs as well. Like one that shoots out flames and the other one that brings back Sergeant Johnson and he has like Gauss cannons. It's great stuff really. So there's a lot more factions, there's a lot more leader powers, there's passive leader powers, there's active leader powers that give you invincibility, that can give you like giant missiles. Really the works, uh, the campaign, it's a standard Halo campaign, it also comes with the blur cinematic, so obviously you're going to get that 10 out of 10 cinematic goodness, and then on top of this, it is a Halo campaign, and really, when it comes to Halo campaigns, you can't go wrong, it's just a bunch of humans beating the shit out of alien dudes. Alien dudes are pretty dumb in the campaign, but I mean... It is a Halo campaign after all. So besides that, then you also got yourself the Awakening Nightmare DLC. Now this expansion pack allows you to play a separate campaign where you're fighting exclusively the Flood. The first campaign is only just UNSC and uh, a Forerunner, Sentinels, and obviously Atriox and his like merry gang over there. Now the Awakening the Nightmare DLC is more of a DLC focused on the Atriox and the gang fighting against the Flood. And so then they fight against the Flood, they do all that shenanigan and good stuff, they link it over to Halo 5, that sort of shit. So if you're down for that type of campaign goodness, then I think Halo Wars 2 is right for you. And then on top of this, in addition to this, you have a separate mode called Blitz Mode. And this mode is essentially a card game inside Halo Wars 2 where you can unlock cards through the campaign, multiplayer, ranking up, etc. And then these cards can be used in the blitz mode where you can summon units onto the battlefield. It's really cool and really awesome in multiplayer. There's even a survival mode where you're fighting against waves and waves of units. And in addition to survival modes, there's also a survival horde mode focused on the flood where you can play around with many different leaders and you can try to defend this massive base against flood attacks, UNSC attacks, uh, and covenant attacks. Almost said Protoss. Completely different, uh, <laughs> different fucking people all together and then in addition to this you got standard multiplayer with strongholds and yeah, um, capture the flag all that stuff i actually don't really remember the multiple modes that you have in halo wars 2 but you do have multiple modes i do remember that and obviously deathmatch and all that stuff cool thing about halo wars 2 that they've also done is maybe make the game a little bit faster in pace especially since halo wars 1 was very turtley They've also added in multitudes of different mini expansions to the maps, allowing there to be a little bit more building space than just your standard uh, giant blocks that you could build on your one main base. Um, and while I'm saying all these good things about Halo Wars 2, I do have to go back to the bad things. 
um, personally, I felt that a lot of Halo Wars 2 was dragged down personally by um, this would be mostly due to the fact that Halo Wars 2 is very buggy and in addition to that very glitchy. I've had numerous problems connecting to games, connecting to players, connecting in general to Halo Wars 2, massive updates that would kind of cancel on me regardless. Sometimes leaders not loading in, sometimes weird graphical issues. And then on top of this, the game isn't really being sold on Steam as well. So you're locking off a good chunk of the player base. All these issues kind of culminate to make me sort of not like Halo Wars 2 all that much um, when actually playing it. I love the single player and I love to play the multiplayer any chance I get. I really think it's a fun and awesome RTS game, but it's really dragged down by uh, problems that it can't really control. So unfortunately, the game is kind of in a sticky situation. And hopefully, even though support is eventually going to be cut for Halo Wars 2, I do hope eventually that Halo Wars 3 does get made and maybe just maybe we could get a flood faction playable <laughs> At the number four slot, we got ourselves Kingdoms and Castles. Kingdoms and Castles is a city builder in which you're managing a fantasy kingdom against Viking attacks and dragon attacks, as well as starvation and disease and all the good stuff that a medieval kingdom would worry about. There's actually a lot of interesting gameplay mechanics going on in Kingdoms and Castles. It's really, really cool. Not only do you have to defend your castle and your kingdom against like Viking attacks, so for example, building towers and walls and ballistas and armies in different areas to defend your kingdom more effectively, but you also have to manage the resources of the people inside, so their food supply, you gotta manage how much beer they drink, their churches as well to give them more faith and to help them out more, you gotta manage the happiness of the people, making sure that a constant supply comes in while also being able to inhabit these people, otherwise you get homelessness. It's, it's really crazy the amount of work that you have to go to making your kingdom a happy place while also trying to, to um, a sort of juggle between making it happy and also defending off against these monsters and armies that are coming at the wall. It's really, really cool to try and like juggle between the two. And the art style is really nice as well. And honestly, I really enjoy the whole like survival against massive armies while also definitely you know, managing an eco on top of that. That's why most of my love for They Are Billions comes from, honestly, the survival aspect of defending against all these monsters and armies that come at you. Well, you know, trying to make sure that the economy doesn't default or anything like that. Um, if I'd have to have any issue with Kingdoms and Castles, I'd probably have to say that when I was playing, I didn't really, in I wa I didn't really enjoy how long it took me to get to a later tier difficulty. I, I just wanted to, like a harder challenge and uh, I don't know, hard difficulty at the time that I was playing was locked off. So I think now you could just like get to the hard challenge right away. So that really does kind of suck. Um, so I should probably give it another try again. Besides that though, I didn't really have any issues. Obviously city builders aren't really like my favorite thing. So the fact that it's on the number four slot is the same reason as like number six and number seven. It's all arbitrary and based on how much I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it quite a lot, but not really that much. I didn't really have any gameplay besides defending against Vikings and dragons and starvation and all that stuff. Once you get like a good enough kingdom going, there's not really much that can really stop you. So I do wish there was a little bit more ways to end the snowball. Maybe some more like different like scenarios that can fix it up. I don't know. At the number 3 slot, we have StarCraft Remastered. I don't need to explain this one. It's StarCraft, but in 1920 by 1080. That's it. At the number 2 slot, we got ourselves Tooth & Tail. Tooth & Tail, I love. I love Tooth & Tail. Love the art. Art's fantastic. Love the scenario. Just animals fighting each other with weapons who doesn't love that and this isn't even rod red wall these are animals with machine guns with rocket launchers with flamethrowers who doesn't love that and then on top of this it's very easy to use very interesting sort of like unit diversity going on as well and then in addition to that i also really love the fact that the game has some nice music attached to it as well um, something that I really have a problem with though is the fact that it could get very snowball-y and then on top of this the matches are 10 minutes long at that and I didn't really see a lot of versatility in gameplay options besides you know the different types of like player sizes that you can have for the game, uh, the game's multiplayer and skirmish modes and then on top of this the campaign. There's no real different factions as well just different units that you can attach to your roster and besides that 
that's really all I have to say about the game. If I'd wanted to change anything, it would be like probably adding in more units and different like game modes, maybe a slower mode, that way we can have like longer matches. But honestly, like as the game is right now, it's fantastic. You should pick it up. Stop watching this video. But make sure to hit that like button. <laughs> All right, so let's do honorable mentions. So first and foremost, we got Steel Division Normandy 44. Didn't like the game. Don't like war game type games. They're kind of just things that I do not enjoy. Why don't I enjoy them? It's because I'm bad at them. 95% of the time is because I'm bad at them. I don't really also like games that don't let me base build. I really like base building and I like the whole gameplay designed around base building. So Steel Division just isn't really for me and it wasn't really a game I was going to like in the first place, but I still tried it out regardless. At least if you try out something, if you don't like it, then you have a good reason to not like it because at least you tried it out and you were able to form an opinion on it. Um, Sun Strike 4. Um, it was honestly, I was just bored by it. I don't really understand. I don't really have unlike still division where i have a reason to hate it that being i don't really enjoy war game type games like or games that are similar in gameplay style to war game sunstrike 4 was kind of weird it felt like it was trying to be a tactical rts but it wasn't but i felt like i couldn't really say that in a top 10 list video but not also confuse people right because ultimately what does that really mean it just felt a little bit too arcade for me too weird i looked at sunstrike 1 2 and 3 um videos and i found that the game was way different from its predecessor which kind of makes sense because games like you know sunstrike or cossacks when they come out of nowhere um they may seem like what they were in the previous installments but really they were just like massive departures even though sunstrike 4 is very pretty even colony would be in the next nomination i don't really like sci-fi city builders and the reason why I like Kingdoms and Castles was largely because of the fantasy motif assigned to it and also because it had that survival gameplay. But besides that, I didn't really like Avon Colony all too much, honestly. It didn't really have the fantasy aspect that Kingdoms and Castles had. It didn't really have the survival aspect. I mean, there was aliens that were attacking you and you have to manage your resources. But besides that, there wasn't really like giant armies that you had to fight against. It was, um, it's a management game and it's not really for me. <laughs> All right, and the number one game on this list would be Total War Warhammer 2. So why did I pick this game? Well, let's see. First and foremost, there are four unique, extremely diverse factions with their own in interesting like gameplay mechanics attached to them in different locations on a new, completely different map. Which, if you own Total War Warhammer 1, expands the map size by a fuck ton, which is crazy. On top of this too, there's its own game mode, which is focused around these four, you, uh, you know, factions and all that stuff. They also have interplay between each other, which is really nice. They have tons of content for Total War Warhammer 2, including a new laboratory mode. That's kind of like you can fuck around with skirmish settings, all that, all that good stuff and gravity and unit sizes and shit like that. They've got the grand campaign, smaller campaigns. They've got skirmish battles, solo battles, multiplayer battles. You've got yourself tons of content. You've got yourself tons of free content. You've got yourself a well-made RTS game through and through. The only issues that I do have with the game, that being that in comparison to previous Total War games, I find it boring, dull, very snowball-y, but there have been efforts made to fix that, to remedy this, and also there's been efforts made to diversify the already existing factions as well, which is really cool. I lo really love to see that, and honestly, I think Total War Warhammer 2 is the best RTS game of 2017. I don't really find that to be all that shocking, considering that we didn't really get a lot of like good hits of 2017. But, you know, in a world with Tooth and Tail, Starcraft Remastered, Halo Wars 2, Dawn of War 3, which, you know, are fairly heavy RTS games, Total War Warhammer 2 still nails them on top. Um, but let's see if it continues to do that. Um, honestly, Creative Assembly have been really hitting it, but uh, in terms of upcoming games, who knows if Thrones of Britannia will be their, their shining star. But you know what? This isn't really the video for that. This is in an upcoming top RTS strategy games list. This is just the top 10 list. For the, for the games that have come out. But then again, I think the top 10 upcoming RTS games of 2018 list should be around the corner fairly soon. See you guys next time, and do subscribe if you do want to be a part of that. Bye-bye. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. But if you want to support the channel, then join in on the Patreon as well as on Discord, where you can join in on some gaming sessions. Bye-bye.